Hello wonderful person and welcome to What The Math, this is Anton and today we're going to be using Universe Sandbox 2 for a fun little experiment. We're going to define planets as something that has our moon as a satellite. What? You'll find out in a second. Enjoy the video and welcome. <laughs> And so for this simulation, I've decided to redefine the definition of a planet that we've talked about in one of the previous videos. And today the definition is going to be as follows. If you can have our moon as a satellite, and if you can actually handle it, you are a planet. If you can't, then you're not a planet and we'll have to demote you to either dwarf planet and or an asteroid. Pretty simple definition, I think. Basically, if I were to erase the moon, and for part two of this test, what we're going to do is we're going to halt all velocities and if the object maintains its name after the moon crashes into it, then the object is definitely a planet. Pretty clear, right? Okay, let's start. And the first object on the list here is going to be Mercury. We're going to slow down time a little bit. Let's go hours per second and zoom into Mercury and place the moon around it. So it's, uh, it's about 4.5 times more massive than the moon. If I place the moon around it, Let's see what happens. We're going to place the moon around uh, 30,000 kilometers away from Mercury. And looks like Mercury is a planet because it can handle the moon uh, orbiting around it. Everything seems to be fine. All right, test number one passed. Test number two. Let's place the moon a little bit closer and see what happens if the moon decides to go for a little smackdown. Is it going to collapse into it? Come on, moon. You can do it. May have to do it a little bit closer. Here we go. And boom, and the name is still Mercury. All right, looks like Mercury passed the test. It is still a planet. Next is Venus. Let's place the moon around Venus. And looks like the moon can also handle our moon just fine. And if I were to smack the moon into Venus. There we go. The Venus still has the name Venus. Excellent. Test passed. Next on the list is Mars, and it looks like Mars can also handle our moon just fine. It orbits around Mars quite well, and if we were to smack moon into Mars, it would maintain its name Mars. So the planetary test of Anton has been passed. All right, next. Um, well, let's actually look at these two objects, Ceres and Vesta. Uh, Vesta is technically a very large asteroid. If I were to place moon around it, <laughs> uh, there is not a single chance in the world that this will survive. All right, so Vesta fails the test. Vesta is not a planet, it is just an asteroid. Ceres. Ceres was discovered in um, late 1800s, so over 100 years ago, and when it was discovered, people thought it was a planet. Uh, today, we consider this to be a dwarf planet, and if I place the moon around it, it disappears. It literally just got pushed out of its orbit. Ceres pass, uh, no, sorry, fails the test, and the moon survives. Ceres is not a planet. Jupiter, however, is the most massive object that is a planet in our solar system. And without even, you know, thinking, you can kind of guess that this is going to pass the test. Look at how small the moon is. This is how tiny the moon is compared to Jupiter. And let's try to smack the moon into Jupiter. Let's see if it works. And boom. Oh, it actually made quite an impact. Look at how large the waves are as they actually spread across the surface of Jupiter. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, so I don't think Jupiter actually was affected much by it. Um, in terms of mass change, only Mars and um, Mercury saw the significant change in mass because their original mass was much lower. But for um, Earth and Venus, their mass hasn't really changed that much. If I show you Earth again, just look at the mass number right here. I'm going to actually make this a graph. So here's the mass of Earth before Moon, and here's the mass of Earth after Moon. It changed by about 3%. That's, that's really little. Actually, it says 6% here, but it's I think that's a little bit too much. Anyway, moving on to the uh, next uh, second gas giant here is Saturn. Saturn is very likely going to pass this test as well. Put the moon around it. Look at that. It orbits just fine. And if we collide the moon with Saturn, it's going to create a beautiful wave again. 
and obviously Saturn maintains its name and its orbit doesn't change as much and also its mass doesn't change as much either. Uh, we next have two ice giants, uh, Uranus and Neptune. Let's start with Uranus and because the size of Uranus is much smaller than Saturn and Jupiter, you can kind of see that the moon um, is actually significantly larger here as well. And that's obviously because um, these are not very large objects. And if I were to place the moon here, it would collide with Uranus, create a large wave, but nothing else would occur. It uh, would not acquire much mass and its temperature would not change much either. And test number 10 is Neptune. So it looks like moon is orbiting just fine. And if we collide the moon with Neptune, it would not change its name, not change its mass, and also not change its temperature much. It's still pretty cold here. And lastly, we come to Pluto, which has lost its planetary status in 2006. And if we place the moon orbiting around it, I'm going to actually decelerate this a little bit. Poor little Pluto is unable to maintain moon in its orbit and collides with the moon, disappears and loses its name as well. And so looks like the moon survives, Pluto fails, Pluto is no longer a planet according to the Anton test of planetary sciences. I just made that up. That doesn't actually exist. Don't quote me on that. And anyway, since Pluto is actually the largest of um, trans-Neptunian objects, every other object, like for example, Maki Maki or Eris, will unfortunately suffer the same kind of fate. Uh, so here, every object that, that receives moon as their satellite, unfortunately disappears because the moon swallows them. I think Eris is going to be the last object we do this with. And this is just to show you that, first of all, dwarf planets are very, very small. They're not very massive at all. Um, our moon is much, much larger than these objects. And second of all, this is to kind of give you an idea of how massive our moon actually is, even compared to moons of other planets. And because it is so massive and because it is in such a relatively close but circular orbit around our planet, it is actually able to protect us from various uh, potential collisions. And one of the reasons why it has so many collisions on its surface is because um, it actually protected Earth for many, many, many billions of years. Uh, and one of the reasons we didn't have more extinction events on our planet is because the moon is here to protect us from all of this. And anyway, that's all I wanted to do in this video. I just wanted to experiment with our moon and see what happens if we try to attach it to various planets in our solar system. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something from this video, and if not, at least you may have enjoyed the collisions. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, and don't forget to share this with your friends or someone who you think may like science videos. I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye bye And meanwhile, I'm going to disable all velocities, and let's see what happens if things start falling onto other things. Here comes the moon. And here comes the Earth and the Sun.